Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to Let's Play Morrowind, where previously uh, the city was attacked by weird fabricant creatures, and we spoke to Amalexia finally, and we explored a Dwemer ruin underneath Mournhold, and yeah, lots of lots of things happened really. Uh, Right now, though, we've been tasked by the goddess to go and deal with a, a sort of apocalypse cult that's uh, been operating in the city led by so what a, a bloke called Eno Romari, apparently is his name. And uh, yeah, we're going to have to go deal with that. Um, specifically, I should speak with Marilyn Othan in the Great Bazaar. Her brother was one of the dead cultists. Yeah, because some of the cultists have been turning up dead. And, uh, from a weird, funky poison that even Armalexia can't cure. Presumably, they've been poisoning themselves. You know, it's like suicide, but, uh, we don't really know for sure. We really don't. So off we go. It might be a good idea to speak to Ino Romari, actually. I think memory serves. Yeah, that's him right there, I think. This gentleman. It looked like his robe was bugged from a distance, but no, it's just white. It's meant to be that colour. Take care, stranger. My greetings and blessings upon you. I am Ina Romari. How may I help you in your journey through this life? You sh you're, you've been talking about the end of times, apparently. We are a peaceful group, dedicated to relieving the suffering all are feeling in these troubled times. I teach my followers the way to enlightenment through understanding of what is happening in our world and what is to come in the next. All of my people know the importance of preparedness for the coming troubles, and many are willing to make great sacrifice for our cause. Really? Uh-huh. Our true ancestors have gone before us and watch over us even now, seeking to protect us. The Daedra also watch us, but in preparation to roam the world freely and harm and destroy us when the next era comes. Oh, yeah. Is that so? Advice? If you're pained by external things, it is not that they disturb you, but your own judgment of them. And it is in your power to wipe out that judgment now by understanding what is happening in our world and what is to come in the next. You see life as neither good nor evil, but only a place for good and evil. People are eternally divided into two classes, the believer, builder, and praiser, and the unbeliever, destroyer, and critic. It's more than two classes. What are you talking about? Uh, Rice. We would like to get to the bazaar now, I think. Other side of the city, though, I think, if I, if I recall. Yeah, we're going to go all the way over there. I see the dead fabricants are still here. And, uh... <laughs> Sarah and Natasha are still wandering around next to the portal. That's fine. Actually, should we go and give her that spear that we that we, we given by Almalexia? But we must, under no circumstances, tell her that it was given to given to us by Almalexia. Otherwise, she gonna be mad. She's not gonna be very happy. She doesn't like Almalexia. Uh, I bring you a gift. The the blessed spear. Enjoy. There you go. I don't know if she's even actually equipped it. Because if she had, she'd have a constant effect shield on her, I think. That's gratitude for you. Right. <laughs> Guards are stuck in the water. To the Great Bazaar. So 
So, what was the name of the person we're looking for? <clears throat> Marilyn Offen. I am once, a join, uh, once again joined by my fluffy co-host over on the side here, if you hear him jingling his little bell. That's him. Just notice that the, the transparency Justice never sleeps. on the texture for Excuse your chainmail has gone a bit please? wonky. Well, I don't really know why. Who are you? The show is late. I wonder why. Oh, the play, you mean? Hello, Marilyn, Marilyn Othrellus. That's close, but it's not actually who we're after, I don't think. Greetings, Dark Elf. I am Marilyn Othrellus, founder of the Mournhold Players. I am sure you came here to watch our production of the horror of Castle Zyre. Well, I'm very sorry to inform you that we won't be putting on the show today. The troupe has its own drama to worry about at the moment. Yes, well, wouldn't you know that the very day we're supposed to be show, de debut our show, our lead actor, Tarvis Belleth, comes down with collie wobbles. We can't find anyone to take over his part. I would do it, but my expertise is desperately needed backstage. Is it really? I don't see a lot going on backstage here, mate, if I'm honest. So now I've got to stand up here and try to drive people away from our heavily promoted production. I just wish we could find someone who looks like Tarvis. Hmm, wait a minute. Wait just a minute there, Dark Elf. You know, you kind of look a little like Tarvis. I think this might work. What do you say, Dark Elf? Would you like to take on the part of Clavides? Captain of the Imperial Guard in our production. Just don't tell the Actors Guild. <laughs> Isn't Tarvis an Imperial? Wait, no, Tarvis Bella. That sounds that sounds like a Dark Elf. Do you know what? I think deep, deep, part part of part of Fathers has always fancied himself as an actor. So all right then. Fan he reckons he'd be pretty good at it. Um, fantastic! Here, take a copy of the script. As you can see, people are already starting to gather, so we need to get this show started. I'm sure you know the horror of Castle Zire quite well, don't you? Of course you do. There's no need for a lengthy rehearsal. Review the script for the next two, two minutes, then talk to me again. Make sure you come back within two minutes, as our play requires exact timing to pull off correctly. Oh, okay. I'm gonna have to do this William Shatner style. They changed the script five minutes ago, and I can't quite remember the line, so I'm going to talk like this. Um, <laughs> where is it anyway? There we go. Clavides, captain of the in uh, of the Imperial Guard, Cyrodiilic. Blah 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 blah. Good evening to you, Sergio. Good evening, is your master at home? Da da da. Is this not here? No, possibly. Would you mind if I came in? No, thank you. What's your name? Uh, Anara. When did your Master Leaf Scathanood. Do you know of an Ashlander by the name of Sul Karifa? Um, then you aren't likely to now. He's dead. He was found a few hours ago lying of dying of frostbite in the Ashlands. He was hysterical, nearly incomprehensible. But among his last words were Castle and Zyre. I guess we'll just improv for the rest of it. Right, I'm ready. Good job, Fathers. You're right on time. Let's get the show on the road. All you have to do is head out there through the door, hit your mark in the centre of the rug next to Guerain, and uh, stand still, deliver your lines, move quickly through the door. Timing is everything. And be careful. The audience knows the play well, and I'll be counting your mistakes. Break a leg. Yeah, I don't suppose you've got anything in the costume department. I mean, I'm dressed as a member of House Talvani right now, and there's a guard here. Good evening to you, Sir Joe. Uh, I don't know, I've come to borrow some sugar. Uh, 
G good evening. Is your master at home? No, Sir Joe. It's only me here. My master, Sadura Kana Talvani Hordalf Seer, Pirate, is at the, the stage. State. Is there something I can do for you? Possibly. Would you mind if I came in? Not at all, Sir Joe. Please, may I offer you some flim? Uh. Oh, crap. Is it yes, please, or no, thank you? Uh, no, thank you. What's your name? Anara, Sir Joe. Anara, when did your master leave uh, uh, Scath the Nude? More than a fortnight ago. That's why it's only me in the castle, Sir Joe. All the other servants and slaves who tend to his lordship travel with him. Is there something wrong? Uh, do you know an Ashlander named Sol Kariva? No, Sir Joe, I know no one by that name. Uh, uh he's... He's dead. He last said castle in, in Zyre. Vec, that's strange. I suppose it's possible that my master knew Off the edge man. of the map now. I don't but remember the rest of the lines. Being and my master being of the house of Telvani, well, if you'll pardon me for being flippant, Sir Joe, I don't think they would be friends. Do you know where your master went? Please, Sir Joe, go wherever Oops. you want. We have nothing to hide. We are loyal imperial subjects. Uh, as I hear, are all Telvani. Uh-oh. Hecklers. I wasn't that bad, was I? That's just outrageous. I thought I did quite well. I mean, under the circumstances. Good heavens. Ooh, you had a nice dagger. I've successfully defended myself from an assassin who assaulted me in the middle of my performance. The play obviously cannot go on. Uh, so much for the show must go on. Perhaps I should speak with Merrin about what just happened. Yes, I will, just as soon as I take off my dressing gown because it's too warm in here right now and I'm starting to boil as I sit here recording this video. Apologies everyone, I know that's very immersion breaking but it has to be done. Right. Oh my, yes, I saw what happened, Fathis. I hope you can forgive it, forgive us, but we knew that an assassin would attack sooner or later. You what? Yes, well, you see, our lead actor Tarvas recently had somewhat a somewhat indecent tryst with the daughter of a Talvani diplomat. The diplomat caught him in the act and vowed revenge. Uh, since Tarvis changes for residences frequently, we knew an attack would come during his performance when the diplomat could be sure of Tarvis's location. Hopefully, since you were able to dispatch the would-be assassin, the pop diplomat won't try, won't try again. I know that the services of the Morag Tong are very expensive to enlist. I apologize for using you in this manner, Fathis, but I hope you understand why it was necessary. Ah, oh, yes. Well, I do intend to pay you in full. Let's see here. During the play, you only made one mistake. Impressive. But your acting skills could definitely use some imp improvement. What? <laughs> here, take this gold and this amulet. will improve your acting abilities whenever you need it. Uh, thank you again. I hope you can forgive us. 1,800 gold and the amulet of verbosity. Amulet of verbosity, eh? That is fortify speechcraft. Twenty to thirty points for thirty seconds and stuff. That's pretty good, actually. That's a useful bit of kit. I have speechcraft sixty-two. I'll have you know. Good sir. Well, well. Um. Did just kill one of my colleagues. Well, that's his stupid fault for not recognising me, I suppose. All right. <laughs> Whoops. Okay. Uh, what were we doing here again? <laughs> Looking for some lady named something Othrilus or whatever. Fenari and Darren, it's not you. You're the pack rat guy. 
that you am after? Marilyn Orphan, here we go. Greetings, how may I help you? I hear about Ina Romari. Her lunatic, Fathis. You'll find him outside the winged glass, spouting his nonsense to passers-by and to the drunk stumbling out of the tavern. Uh, yeah, but you had a brother, right? End of times. They're a suicide cult, plain and simple. Their beliefs are destructive, heretical, and frightening to me. I don't know how my brother ever got involved with them. I begin to see them all over the city, but you'll most often find them in God's Reach outside the winged glass. Yeah, we kind of already talked to him, actually. Several. You heard about my brother. It's hard to imagine he's gone. All would be well if he hadn't fallen in with Eno Romari and those end-of-times lunatics. Sevil was a lonely man, a bit lost. But he was hardly stupid. It was that cult that caused his death. Mm. Uh, maybe we should go talk to Eno Romari again? I don't know. Let's go around this way. Do you know what? I'm going to put the shield away. It just feels weird wandering about with a shield out with my robes. My fancy formal robes, you know. Just strikes me as a bit strange. I will switch my boots out, though. For the faster ones. Alright, let's get ourselves over to God's Reach again. That is one big ass moat. Does that go all the way around? Looks like it does. Is it a moat or a canal? What is it? I don't know. Usually, traditionally, a moat goes on the outside of the walls. I mean, I'm just saying. Who's this dude? Bell's even him. No time to talk, Dark Elf. Excuse me. All right then. This area really is gigantic, isn't it? And so much of it isn't really used for anything. It's just there to give you a sense of scale, I suppose. Who's this dude standing around out here? This park, these plants, are hymns of praise, Sarah, and I'm right proud of it. Oh, you must be the gardener, I suppose. G-Pop Varus. When you're quite finished. All the trees and plants, tended lawns and paths are hymns to the pro hymns of praise to Armalexia's name. It's humble work, Sarah, but I'm very proud of it. People generally just call me G Pop Varus. I'm the gardener of the Mournhold Temple, and I've been so, so almost and I've been so almost as long as I've been married. I belong to the temple, of course, but only as a lay member. I see. This is the way to God's Ridge, isn't it? Yes. Right, you know, I'm back. We need to have another chat, I think. Justice never sleeps. <sighs> Your beliefs. Our beliefs are very simple, dear friend. The Blessed Tribunal, though once filled with glory, are no longer the gods they once were. As with the tides uh, and Tamriel's moons, all cosmic powers will wax and wane. But when gods die, it creates ripples throughout the lands. The passing of the three will be a prelude to the end of this era and the beginning of the next. The followers of the end times are making ourselves ready for this to happen. We realize that the end of the era will bring many changes. We believe that the gates of oblivion will open and the multitude of Daedra will roam this world freely. Some might tell you that this is a good thing that we are descended from the Daedra, and it will be a return to the natural order of things. I know differently, though. The coming age will be a time of great horror. The Daedra princes are not our ancestors, nor are they our allies. They will wash over the land, destroying all that Man and Mer have built over these thousands of years. The only protection from this scourge will be our true ancestors that have gone before us and watch over us even now. Many of our followers choose to participate in the cleansing to prepare the way for the rest of us. It is a sacrifice to be sure, but it is for the greater good. The greater good. Um, sorry. <laughs> uh, the cleansing. 
It is a glorious ritual, friend, Fathis Ulvan. Our followers cleanse themselves of all their troubles, all of their burdens here on this earth. They send themselves ahead to the ancestors, spreading our word, making ready for when we shall all join them in our fight against the Daedric Hordes. Speak the truth, and all shall honor you. Okay, I should report this information to Armalex immediately. Hmm. Gates of Oblivion opening. Hordes of Daedra. What absolute nonsense, Faden. Who ever heard of something so silly? Let's see what Almalexia has to make of this. That sentence didn't make any sense. Let's see what Almalexia makes of this. What may I do for you, my child? So sinister the way she does that. What have you learned about this end of times cult and their beliefs? Have you served me well in gathering this information? They would dare. So the tribunal has lost its power, has it? These fools would dare question Armalexia's power here in her city? I will give them a lesson in power, Fathis Ulvan, and you will be my agent. These fools must be reminded of the true power of a god. Since the attack on the city, much of my own power has been spent caring for my people. The number of wounded has been astronomical, and caring for them all has been taxing to even me. Still, I must demonstrate to these people what it is to mock the will of a god. You will travel to the ruins of Bams Amshend and activate the Karstang's Bachan. Loosely translated, the Weather Witch. At its height, the Dwemer civilization was masterful in the use of machinery. In a time of drought, Dwemer scholars were commissioned to create a machine that would bring rain to their lands. They created the Karstang's Bachan. Its existence was little more than a myth until recently, when the ruins opened beneath my city. I wish for you to activate the machine, make it to create ash storms in Mournhold. Then these heretics will know the power of Amalexia. That's correct. While these storms may be common on the island of Vardenfell, they do not occur here, so far removed from the Red Mountain. Now, though, they will, and these heretics will understand the power of the Tribunal, the power of Almalexia. Take this, and use it to activate the machine. You will have to divine its workings on your own, Fathas Ulfen, but I believe you are up to the task. A power Dwemer Coherer. Oh, Dwemer Coherer is the, the ever-recurring joke, for some reason. Interesting. Do you know anything about Sothasil? He's the only one of the tribunal I have yet to meet. Do not concern yourself with Sothasil. He lives in his own way, as he always has. No, I have not spoken with him in a long time, but this is not odd. I am certain all is well with my old friend. I see. Very well. I think Sothasil is probably the only member of the tribunal that Fathis really relates to particularly. He would like quite like to meet him. Uh, right. Ash storms. We're gonna go create an ash storm. There in. This is probably heresy, but. I'm beginning to think that Lady Armalexia might be slightly unhinged. I mean, this really does seem a little bit... Whatever. Okay, we're going back down to Bam Zamchen then. Remember which side you're supposed to get in by. Oh. Hearthfire Hall. Did Faerun follow us down? 
think he did. Yes, <laughs> perfect. I forgot how dark it was down here. Right, did everything stay dead? I sincerely hope so. Oh dear. Where did you come from? Did you get stuck somewhere and then teleport? I bet you did. Alright mate, you take care of it. Alright, where are we going to find the damn... I didn't see anything like that when I was down here last time. Perhaps... All of Winds, Passage of Whispers. Which was the one where it, which ended in a collapsed passageway? I think this is the one that leads to the forge. I know there's a collapse bit in here, but I don't think it's what we're after. No. I'm using aloud and in metagamey gamey terms here because I'm just sort of sort of thinking to myself. You know, the bit the collapse bit where we couldn't proceed past last time, that might be where it is. And the reason that's there is to stop people from getting the damn thing too early. Know what I mean? Since uh, you can't do locked door needs a key in this game. Well, you know, you know they can, but it has to be like a really special thing. It's not just like a basic function of the engine like it is in Oblivion and Skyrim. Actually, you just need to key a thing in Skyrim? I don't remember now. I think they tend to block the doors in other ways, don't they? Like by putting a bar on the other side of them and stuff like that. Or a lever or what have you. Oh, crumbs. Come on. And now the long dark of Moria. <sighs> dum, dum, dum. I actually do quite like how dark it is down here, though. It makes sense. Definitely makes sense. Radax Forge. Yeah, I have a feeling that if it's going to be anywhere, surely it's going to be down here. Hello, big monster. I search this bit. I just don't really remember it. I have to be honest. Alright, let's see. This was the room which was like really, really, really heavily guarded. And like it had a lot level 100 lock on it, didn't it? But then the chest turned out to be full of garbage. It's not in here. Oh, here's this again. Collapsed rocks. Yep, that's not moving. Bother. You got anything to say about this? What do you think about health of? Forgive me for being so blunt, but in my opinion, he's a fork tongued, two faced, lily livered, murdering bastard. Good thing you don't know much about me, isn't it, Farin? 
I suppose I'm not lily livered. Oh, maybe it was in the hall, the, the hall of wind or whatever it's called. So we can't bloody find it right here. The car stangs bachan. I mean, we found one big machine, but it didn't really... Uh, there didn't seem to be a way of interacting with it. Yeah, maybe we did need to go to the Hall of Wind or whatever it's called. Maybe the name Hall of Wind is a clue. I don't know. Back in the Passage of Whispers. Something about this machine, man. The way it's glowing ominously. But there just doesn't seem to be a way to do anything with it. No. I want to get back to Half Fire Hall, I think, unless I've missed something over here. Oh, hello. Maybe I have. No, that's just back to Radax Forge. For some reason, the, uh, the one of these little icons doesn't appear for it. Kind of odd, but all right, fine, whatever. Excuse me, folks. Oh, dear. Hall of Wales. Yep, definitely explored that already. Ah, oh, this is riveting gameplay, this. It's my fault for coming down here and killing all the beasties, I suppose. Somewhat ahead of schedule. But honestly, it felt like well, it was worth doing. It's what Fathers would have done. He'd be like, I'm not just going to stand here and not explore a glamour ruin. Are you mad? Oh, I missed an old glamour book, apparently, though. wonder what else I missed. Hello. Is this what I'm looking for? Aha! There's a Dwemer cylinder there. We need to find somewhere to put the powered coherer, don't we? I've removed that cylinder. I mean, this is... I don't, I don't think... I, I don't recall seeing a machine quite like this anywhere else. So this kind of makes me think this is what we're after, but... Seem to be able to do anything with it other than remove that cylinder. Did you just shut that door? What'd you do that for, Fairin? By this. It's not this either. What are we missing here? What are we missing? There's plenty of machinery down here. Cylinders. And spare machine parts. I feel like this is the place. I feel like this is where we need to be. I just. I 
I don't know what to do. Any hints in the journal? No. Not a sausage. There's something back in the main hall I've missed. I didn't see you earlier, but you're empty, so who cares? Power Dwemer Kahira. I'm not seeing any, like, junction boxes. You know, like the ones we found in Kennel Z. I feel like something like that is probably what we need, but I'm just not seeing anything that fits the bill. Hmm, all right, I've had enough wandering around aimlessly, and I suspect so have you guys. One moment. All right, folks, I've discovered the reason I was stuck in the room, which was very, very, very tightly locked, and then we discovered had virtually nothing in it. There was supposed to be in there a couple of these Dwemer satchel packs, which are basically satchel charges that we can use to blow up the collapsed rocks. And uh, for some reason that I don't understand, they didn't spawn. I guess Tribunal's just been a glitchy bastard again. Uh, but yeah, there were no satchel, satchel packs in there. They just didn't spawn. Uh, there was a, apparent, I think there was apparently supposed to be a third one as well upstairs. And Remember there was that lock level 100 chest we found on a shelf that I opened and it was empty and I was like, ha ha, those crazy Dwemer. There was supposed to be another bit of satchel pack in there as well. Uh, for some reason... Don't know why, maybe it's just Tribunal being a glitchy bastard, maybe it's a mod that's causing the problem, but for some reason, none of the satchel packs actually spawned. Hence, I'm stuck. However, I have, you know, magicked myself in a couple, shall we say, and now we can continue. Four. Well, you better get back, Farid. Three, two, one. Lovely. There we go. Bam Zam Shen, Passage of the Walker. How annoying was that? Ugh. Wasted a good 20 minutes there, I felt like. Alright, Farin. Keep your wits about you. We've not been here yet. Good grief, this save is taking a while. There we go. Ooh, but I got a fire shield, yeah. Hello. What does the Sword of the Moon Reaver do again? I've, I've forgotten. Absorb Magicka and weakness to Magicka. All right. Kind of a weird effect, really, for a sword. But okay. One of the light, light spider things, Luminarium spider. I love those. That's really cool. King's Walk. Heavy Dwemer door. We could have explored this ages ago. If the satchels had actually bloody spawned, we could have explored this ages ago. Because Fathers being Fathers probably would have picked up the satchels just as collectibles. And then I would have activated that collapsed rock thing, and uh, it would have been like, do you wish to play satchel charge? And I would have been like, oh, so that's what those are for. Never mind. 
pretty sure I actually have a Dweller Satchel charge somewhere. Uh, back at the lab, don't I? I think I got it from Kemmel Z. Which of course means that there was probably a collapsed rock wall somewhere in Kemmel Z I could have used it on. <laughs> Time of werewolf things. <laughs> Don't forget away head. We got any treasure? Oh, we've got treasure. Yes. Give me those pretty gems. Give gems. Give them to me. Yes, emeralds. We like. More gems for the alchemist in town. So I can make some more money. Oh god, there's another one. Oh god, not this again. <sighs> Submit to the three, the spirits and thy lords. Cover your ears, Faerun. Oh god, this is loud. I don't know if I'll end up remembering to edit this. I hope I do though, because it's really loud. Okay. Um. Ow. What is, ow, what is happening, ow? Something shot me. Oh, there's, all right. Faerun, you deal with that, mate. Do we have a junction box? Yes, put the Cohero in there. Um, I was able to activate it from deep within these ruins. It will be difficult to tell what effect it has on the city above. We have levers. Oh. We have levers with a thing with pictures. Okay, that looks like rain. Uh, cloudy, perhaps? Blank. We want... The, I saw one with a volcano. That's what we want. That one. Okay, I've, I've now stopped it on. I'm not sure what. What's that supposed to be? That's impossible to tell. Uh, there we go. If I understand the Dwemer symbols on the cast tanks, Bajan, I believe the machine is now causing ash storms in Mournhold. All right, all right, all right. Let's, uh, let's just mark here, shall we? And then get the hell out of here. Oh, God. The noise? <sighs> That's better. <sighs> um, can't help but notice that. Oh wait, no, here we go. Yeah, this is a bit weird, isn't it? Ash storms here in Mournhold. Why has Amalexia not done something about this? She must make it end. Yeah, about that. He doesn't care. <laughs> Got nothing to say about it. Fedrus. Whatever you want. Within reason. That was a bit weird, guys. Many blessings upon you, my loyal servant. In my wisdom, I have sent you to activate the castangs Pachan. Tell me you've accomplished this task for your goddess. Well done, Fathis Ulven. This is the effect I was looking for. Ash storms in Mournhold. My magic will prevent anyone from further tampering with this machine. You will, of course, keep silent about this. 
My powers are a bit drained, mortal. They are not gone. My ordinators will take care of the remains of this end times cult and their leader. You have done well. Yes, the castangs Pachan is creating the weather just as I had hoped, and it will remain this way until I am satisfied these people have learned a lesson. I thought you said you were going to send the ordinators to kill them all. Okay. It's going to slowly back away now. Mm -hmm. Amalexa is pleased with the ash storms created by the castangs Pachan. The city of Mornhold is strangled by the harsh weather. The decorative trees lining the city streets are dying and the people are frightened. I can only hope the goddess does not allow this to go on for long. Bless and keep you Mind you keep it that way. Uh-huh. Well, I gotta say, this is a spot of bother, isn't it? Why did I agree to do this? I'm not really sure. Possibly because defying the will of a god is generally a poor idea on the best of days. <laughs> it's getting blown backwards by the wind. Uh, right. Well. I wonder if we go. What will happen if we go talk to Eno? If he's still there. That's the bazaar. No. I want to go to the. I want to go to God's Reach. I wonder if it was possible to muck around with the other weather types. Should have maybe thought about doing that before I uh, activated it, because that sounds like she's made it made it so we can't do it anymore. There's Eno. Hmm. Maybe she's right. <laughs> That's an appropriate random line of dialogue. Um. The blessed healing mother, no, she was once filled with glory. She it's no longer the goddess she once was. Well, yes, I mean she's got me running off to use weather machines so that she can pretend that she's causing ash storms. That doesn't really inspire me with confidence. But the goddess has created these ash storms to teach my group true power. They will come to me in droves. This madness is surely another sign of the troubles to come. Take care, Fathus. You have been warned. Yeah, I feel like this is maybe having the opposite effect. Deary, deary, deary me. What's the time? 5 p.m. We should get some rest. Where's what's the face? There you are. Oh, no, I didn't mean to click that. Yes. Thank you. All the problems out there. What? Oh, no, that was the bouncer thing. Let's see. It, it. These are what they call ash storms. I've heard they happen up north, but not here in Mournhold. How can this be? Can you ask your question, yes, have Do indeed. You oh, it's still going on, I see. Yeah, I'll be honest right now, I'm kind of, I'm a little bit stuck. I don't actually know what we're supposed to do now. Uh, yeah. So we'll look at the craftsman's hall, shall we? We've not been in there yet, I don't think. Weak as wickweed. 
Rogue never does a thing. thing. Need custom armor? I'm the one you want. Really? Hello, Dark Elf, and welcome to my shop. Have you come to order a piece of my famous custom armor? I make ebony armor and glass armor to order, but my specialty is adamantium armor. There's adamantium ore in the rock beneath Mournhold, and our family has been the adamantium crafters for generations. Adamantium armor, huh? You supply the adamantium ore and, I, and pay for my work, and I provide you with custom adamantium armor. Here, I've had a list of armor requirements and prices printed up. Look it over, and if you're interested and you have the adamantium ore and the gold, speak to me again, and we'll write up an order, and you'll have your new armor in a day later. Nice. Medium armor, if I recall, adamantium. Um, the ore? Oh, he's just, he's just goodbyed me out of the conversation. I was going to ask you about the ore, dude. Where beneath Mournhold? Well, that's a secret, of course. Worth quite a lot, and found only in hard to come at and dangerous places. But now and again, an adventurer will come by with a fine load of ore, looking to have a helm or braces made. So there must still be finding new deposits. Repair my stuff. There we go. I don't suppose you sell any, do you? No, of course not. Well, you do sell them adamantium claymore, which is pretty pretty neat. A silver crossbow with a broken icon. Adamantium mace, ooh. Adamantium short sword, that's not bad actually. <laughs> that's apparently a used version. Costs the bloody same as a brand new one though. Adamantium spear. Well, what do you do here? Are you speaking to me, Dark Elf? I suppose you want some armor or steel or something or other, right? Well, why don't you take your sniveling looks and your ungrateful tone and talk directly to the smith? I'm just an apprentice. I've got nothing to offer to the likes of you, and I don't belong here. That's right. I'm too good for this place. Slaving over a hot forge is a job best left to, ple to the plebes. I mean, look at old Bowles over there with his scorn, sweat, and saliva stained shirt, and his head like a giant corpus infected melon. And that flop faltering gait of his, like a gua with venereal warts. It's a wonder he even remembers to put his pants on in the morning. It really is. Now compare him with me. Yes, just look at me. I'm the picture of perfection. Look at these nails. Do you know how much I had to pay for the, those filthy lardy manicurists for these? Look at my flawless complexion. The ideal proportions of my body. Do you think the gods created such an image of majesty for the purpose of blacksmithing? Certainly not, my naive friend. But clearly, I'm destined to become an adventurer. Do you mock me, plebe? I aspire to heights greater than you've ever dreamed of. Do you think monsters and evil men will stand any chance when they behold this majestic specimen of humanity striding towards them? No. They will quail and faint at the sight of me. I will wave their corpses aside with a swipe of my hand. My greatness is inevitable. In fact, I believe they will start on, I will start on my adventuring just today. Mark my words, Dark Elf. Next time you come around, you won't find me here. Today I met an extremely rude smithy's apprentice by the name of Ilnori Faustus. He told me how he plans on becoming an adventurer and how he expects to abandon his apprenticeship very soon. Got anything to say about this guy? I see you've already met the, made the acquaintance of the charming apprentice. Ah, he's my apprentice, and the last imperial apprentice I'll ever be forced into taking, that's for sure. He doesn't do a lick of work, preferring to sit around cleaning those damned fingernails of his and telling me what a bloody oaf I am. I doubt he'll be around much longer to bother me. He seems drawn to death like a lodestone. <laughs> yeah, Gak, good luck. What do you want? I want you to make weapons, not a chat. I'm mean, Yagak Grow Gluck Smith. What do you want? I mean, to forge weapons, not to chat. Okay. Nice armor, though, dude. Right. Okay, then. Right, wasn't very obvious, but apparently we just need to talk to our Alexia again. However, I've noticed something. One moment, before we do that. Who is this fellow? Oh, this is too easy. Well, 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 look who it is, my dear friend Fathers Ulven. Just my luck that you should stumble in here. <laughs> you 
indeed. It seems my good fortune knows no bounds. Despite my mistreatment at your hands, I've found riches, been able to influence just about anyone I talk to, and can you believe I've never lost a fight? Never even gotten a scratch. So I don't think I'll have a problem continuing that streak, and I owe you. It's Gaynor, everybody. Run away! Pirate. I've been looking forward to this. So Gaynor here. He is one of the toughest NPCs in the entire game. He's a bit of a funny joke NPC, really, but uh, his stats definitely aren't very funny. He's ridiculously good. And ooh, get away from me. Ow. And I, I saw this guy when we started Tribunal, and I thought to myself, hang on a minute. When I had Faerun with me, I thought, I thought, hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. Unstoppable force, immovable object. Apparently, the immovable object won. Someone has actually managed to kill Faerun. That is amazing. Yeah, that's Gaynor for you. Okay, so let's load this up again, and uh, I'll, fi I'll help fight him. Because, wow. <laughs> there you go, folks. You thought Faerun was OP, meet Gaynor. <laughs> I was really curious to see who would win that. <laughs> uh, considering Faerun just absolutely ruffle stomps everything else in this game. Goodness me. I know that in Skyrim there's that Ebony Warrior. I've never played a game of it long enough for him to actually spawn, but I've always wondered if that was a nod to this guy. Nationalizing data. Petting the cat. He's curled up next to me. He's looking exceptionally cute right now. He's got his little paws up near his face. It's his chief survival mechanism really is looking cute. It's the only reason anyone puts up with him. Run while you can. Alright, here we go. You see how I'm having difficulty hitting the guy with with like 99 long blade skill. Marin's razor's barely making a dent in him. All right, let's put this crazy ranged health of mine, release health of mine to the test. There we go. That goes. Oh, he reflected it, the bastard! He killed me. <laughs> Holy crap! Yes, Gaynor is ridiculous, man. He's ridiculous. Uh, yeah, I was going to say magic would be a great way to get past that mountain of armor he has, but <laughs> not when he can reflect. <laughs> oh, boy. What have I? Imagine if I was still playing on plus 100 difficulty right now. Just imagine, folks. Just freaking imagine. Uh, let's use this. Oh, this is Here we go. Easy. No one can challenge me. Bastard's got me in a stun lock. It's not supposed to work like this. Now you're going to get it. I get a cheeky absorb in there. I can. Nearly got him. No! <laughs> oh, man. Meet the final boss of Morrowind, everyone. Some of you have been waiting for this, I'm sure. Those of you who've played this before and are familiar with the terror that is Gaynor. Okay, let's prep. Serious big time prep now. Fifth barrier. 
Fire shield. First barrier. Fortify attack. Where's fourth barrier? There it is. Alright, motherfucker, we're coming for you. We could get blown backwards in the wind. <laughs> Do I have any powers that could help me out, actually? Protective spirit, yeah, why not? Stupid. Long blade and crystal 100, hooray! Let's drink a potion. For once in my life, let's actually drink a potion. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. Gaynor's amulet, constant effect, fortify luck, only 10 points. That's the maddening thing about it. It's like he managed to do all this with only plus 10 luck. He must have had a lot to begin with. Aside from that, it's just ebony longsword, some ebony armor. And that's it. An exquisite pants and exquisite shirt. That's, that's it. So the, his bullshit reflect effect is just just something he natively seems to have. It's it's just very silly. But anyway, <laughs> right with that out of the way, <laughs> I was looking forward to showing that off. Why does he do that? What may I do for you, my child? I am well pleased, good and faithful servant. My people look upon the elements and see there is written see there written a divine testament to my lordship. Did ever any other god display such dominion over the earth and sky? But now, with a heavy heart, I must lay a sad burden upon you. I bid you bring the peace of understanding to my missing hand. One of my most faithful guards, one of my very own hands of Amalexia, pledged to honour and protect and serve me in all ways, he's lost his mind. Salas Valor has abandoned me, and now spews vile and slanderous untruths about me to any who would listen. I pity him, and know he is not responsible for his actions. To view the splendour of a god may drive even the strongest mortal mad, but now he presents a threat to us, and he is very dangerous. I fear you may not be able to spare his life. Now Salas Valor haunts the streets and sewers of Mournhold. His wild, distracted manner frightens the people, but even my ordinators are afraid to confront so terrible a weapon master and war wizard. I beg you, seek out Salas Valor. Relieve us of this threat to my beloved people and bring peace to my sacred city of Mournhold. Salas Valor was once my most trusted hand and faithful servant, but recently his behaviour has been erratic. He has been quiet and unresponsive. I am afraid... I may have allowed him to come too close. It is impossible that a mortal and a god might meet on equal ground, but perhaps he had deluded himself. I regret this, his lamentable state, and I am sorry that I may have been partly responsible for his condition. What on earth has been going on? Baron Zaya? What? Yes, the mother to young King Helseth. A fascinating woman. Mortal, but fascinating. Yeah, she's got a whole couple of series of biographies about her. All right. Do you know much about Salas? Well, let's just go, go outside before we start having a little conversation, shall we? All right. Do you know anything about Salas Valor? Ah, oh, he doesn't. Which is a bit of a damn shame, if I'm honest. Fedris. clean this temple, Sarah. Mind you keep it that way. Do you know where to find this guy? No, good, good, bloody hell. All right. Time to just go wandering about the city, I suppose. 
we ask one of these other ordinators, maybe they'll know. Weather will pass, the goddess will protect us, move along. Do you believe that though? Do you really believe Justice. that? She did mention sewers. I really hope he's not somewhere down in the sewers and I have to go searching for him. That'll take forever. Speak the truth and all shall honor you. Salas Famono. I should probably go and get my gear repaired again, actually, now after that fight with Gaynor. Now I think about it. It's you again with the fancy robe. Waiting for someone. Who the devil are you waiting for? There's probably going to be a few unsolved mysteries like, like her. Because uh, we haven't done the optional uh, Royal Palace stuff in this playthrough of Tribunal. If I was a more pro-imperial character, I definitely would have. But considering we're not, and considering the way it played out, and considering that the quests themselves aren't actually that amazing, yeah. Oh! I was about to say it's a bit weird that you don't have a shield. A new dog. Die, Fetcher. Oh boy. So she sent you for me. Now you are her favourite. How convenient. Whichever one of us dies, she will be well pleased. And if both of us die, so much the better. Well, I am content. Perhaps this is how it was meant to end. I ask the forgiveness of all the gods and spirits, whoever they may be, and you too might make your peace with the gods, because at least one of us will not live to see another sunset. Oh boy. Oh boy, here we go. <laughs> A better swordsman than me, eh? That was optimistic of you. Uh, we do now have access to a full set of her hands armor and her ebony scimitar, which is still not as good as Goldbrand because Goldbrand is just king, apparently, but still. Do you want this, mate? Where, where is the bloody thing? There. Reflect. Yeah, I thought there might be a bit of that going on. I'm thinking I might take the rest of this and give it to... Um, oh, is it heavy? Oh, uh, never mind then. Oh, uh, bother. I thought it was medium armor, like regular automator armor. But it's not. Oh, I forgot I still have a Wraith Guard. Should I wear Wraith Guard? Which one did it remove? It removed uh, the one that helps me open locks a bit better. It does give me a pot constant sparkly shield. Does it do much for my armor value, out of curiosity? Where did that glove go? There it is. Actually, it, yeah, it does a surprisingly large amount, considering it's heavy armor. But, well, yeah, partly because of the bloody shield effect as well, come to think of it. But, obviously, it does. Uh, yeah, no, we're not going to... You can keep that, I'm afraid. Amalaxia might get a bit pissed if I just nick it anyway, to be fair. But yeah, I'm not carrying that around with me. Not even to shove in the uh, in the in the in the vault. He's dead. Farin, there's something really freaking fishy going on, man. I don't like this. Rather <coughs> in character, Farin, there is something afoot here. I do not like this. I have a bad feeling about it. His relationship with Armalixia, him see, see, seeming, seemingly believing me to be some sort of competitor. Yeah, I do not like this at all. This is going to a very strange place. 
And it seems like you and I are the only people around here who can see it. Right. What may I do for you, my child? Have you eliminated the threat of my poor, mad, missing hand and brought peace to Mournhold? Salas Valor is dead. The pain is almost more than I can bear, but you have served me faithfully, and it is my, in my mind to grant you a divine blessing. Would you like skin as tough as iron? Would you like my protection against paralyzing terror? Or would you wish to always bask in a warm comfort of my reflected glory? Quick now, choose. You must not keep your deity waiting. Skin like iron, protection against paralysis, warm reflected glory. I don't even know what that means. <sighs> yeah, and me as a, as a player wants to be like, oh, hell yeah, awesome blessing. But Fathis at this point is just like, this doesn't sound like a very good idea at all. I don't want any freaking blessings from this woman. She's mad as a box of frogs, even if she is a goddess. Um, nothing for me right now, but thank you, my lady. Amalexia regards you coolly. Perhaps you think yourself too proud to accept the gifts of your mistress. Very well. It is as you wish. She was pleased and offered a reward to me with a special divine blessing. I declined her blessing, however, and I think that she was less pleased by that. Which makes me think I did the right thing. Is what Fathis is thinking. He didn't, he didn't say that out loud. It is time we talked of greater things. I have watched you since your arrival in Vardenfell, and you have been a strong and faithful servant to me. None but the Nerevarin could have succeeded as you have. How long I have waited for this. My Nerevar returned to me at last. I have watched from my temple as others, could, as others have made the claim, and I have seen them fall. I believe now that you are the one who was prophesied. I believe you now to be the Nerevarin. Though I have watched others come and go, my belief is that you are the child of prophecy. The time has come for you to reclaim your station. Together, we can unite Morrowind once again, free from the Imperial yoke. Excuse me. For years, the Kaima and the Dwemer had been at war. The Dwemer spurned the Daedra that the Kaima worshipped, instead placing their faith in their mortal creations, or metal creations, it was only when the Nords invaded Resdane that the two nations were able to join as one under the leadership of our Nerovar and the Dwarf King Dumak. In time, the two generals became blood friends, and on the day that Nerovar and I were wed, Dumak presented us with twin blades, Hope's Fire and True Flame. Each was a magnificent blade, the pinnacle of Dwemer craftsmanship. Their blades burned with an unearthly fire, and the sight of them struck fear into our enemies. My blade has been kept safe, but not so true flame, the blade of Nerevar. It was lost at the Battle of Red Mountain. True flame, you say? The blade of Nerevar. In the battle beneath Red Mountain, true flame was shattered, the flame extinguished, and in the confusion, the peace is lost. It is time for you, Nerevarin, to remake the blade and take your place by my side once again. I have only one, which I now give to you. Through my magic, I have been able to determine that the other pieces of the blade are nearby. Find the other two pieces of the blade, and forge the blade anew. Only you may accomplish this, Nerevarin. Okay, on the one hand, fancy, really super duper fancy sword. On the other hand, this is getting out of hand. As I said, they are nearby. Look to those in the city that you know and trust for guidance. Find those who would have use for, for items such as this. Prove your mettle to me, Nerevarine, and soon we will stand together once again. The best weaponsmiths in all of Tamriel reside in my city. When you have recovered the pieces of the blade, seek out the finest among these craftsmen and press him into our service. You'll find a number of them in my fair city. It was these artisans who built this city from ruins under my guidance. This glorious temple was erected by men and myrrh of stout heart and strong faith. If any in this land can forge that blade, they'll be found in my city. Okay.
All right, Farron, looks like we need to go and find Anduril, Flame of the West. I mean, <clears throat> True Flame. So she gave us a piece of it. Well, you know what? If there's a very fancy magical sword that never of our once wielded, Fathis definitely wants it. Even though Armalexia's continued ramblings are getting very disturbing. You don't know anything useful, do you? Moon and Star? Uh, well, I suggest we go to God's Ridge and go to the Craftsman's Hall. That would definitely be the place to start, I assume. Who else would we talk to? Hmm, not sure, really. There is the museum. We could go to the museum. They might have something. in Dalin. Damn that Ilnori, Ilnori Faustus. Damn him. Damn that cockered, scrib-sucking son of a hammerfell whore. He left me just a few hours ago without so much as a, a wave goodbye. Just walked out the door. Well, good riddance, I suppose, but I still need an apprentice. If you find any able-bodied young person looking for work, let them know I need a new apprentice. Good. Uh, I hear about something else entirely, though. God damn it. What about you, Gagag? -gag? I'm the one you want. Forge the blade. I can make any blade you want. Don't care whose it was to start with, with who, or who this Nerevar is. Bring me the pieces, and I'll put it together better than it was before. To work with that kind of material, I'll work for free. But I'll need the pieces first. Now, go away. Okay, so he'll forge it for us. But... We don't know where the pieces are. I think that tavern girl was looking at me. How can I tell her I'm not interested? <laughs> Get out of my way. Keep out, says the door. Okay. All right, maybe we'll try the museum. I think it's over here. Museum of Artifacts. Seems like a sensible bet, right? A museum to find an ancient pe bit of bit of a blade. Greetings, I'm Tarasa Aram, curator of the Mournhold Museum of Artifacts. The museum is privately funded and is an effort to collect and display many of the artifacts from this part of the world. Should you want to sell something you feel the museum would be interested in, bring the item here and we can assess its value. Be warned, however, that a theft that theft is a serious matter and likely to equal a death warrant for any foolish enough to attempt it. Yeah. So yeah, you can come here. Uh, and you can, a lot of the unique artifacts in the game that you pick up, you can actually sell to the museum. Now, in vanilla, she gives you a ridiculous amount of money for them sometimes, like 20 grand or something like that. However, I believe in Morrow and Rebirth, they've actually redone it, so she only, you, she only gives you like a couple of grand or something like that. It's actually very disappointing. Uh, for example, I have the Boots of the Apostle. See, look, she says here, I can sell you up front, tell you up front that the museum is willing to offer half the total value of any artifact sold up to 30,000 gold. We do have a limited budget, you see. However, when we actually click it, she gives us the offer. Yeah, worn by Tiber Septim, supposedly a gift to Talos Stormcrown from the Greybeards. Wondrous, Fathis, all them, simply wondrous. And you're willing to sell them to the museum? Well, then I offer you 3,525 gold as compensation. Yeah, thanks for that, Rebirth. It gets. <laughs> um, it was an easy way to, to uh, exploit the game and get ridiculous amounts of money, though, to be fair. This. No, we'll keep them. Interesting, isn't it? That I, don't, I don't, to my knowledge, I don't think the Boots of the Apostle ever made an appearance in Skyrim in the end. Even though it would have been extremely appropriate for them to do so, considering their history. A gift to Talos Stormcrown from the Greybeards. Yes. 
No, I think I'll keep them. I've grown quite attached to them, you know. Rather fond of those boots. Can't really tell you why. I just really like them. The Bow of Shadows. 2,250 gold. Oh, this is a piece I never thought I'd see. Did you know that the Assassin Dram was said to have wielded this bow? I would be honoured to have it. This on display. I can offer you 2,000... No, no, no. Curious of the saviour's hide. Ah, oh, hair scenes hide. What a prize. Are you willing to part with it? I can offer you 5,750 gold for it. No, no. Disappointing, but understandable. I'm just teasing this poor woman now, aren't I? Gold brand. Five, only five grand for gold brand. What an incredible weapon. That's all she has to say. Just, it's an incredible weapon. I'm looking for pieces of true flame. As a matter of fact, that's why I'm here. The pieces of the blade of Nerevar here in Mournhold. Now that's something I'd like to get my hands on for the museum. I can't say that I've, any, I've seen any that I know of, but I do have one piece from roughly the same time, and it seems to be of Dwemer construction. I don't even have it on display because I haven't been able to positively identify it yet. It's a shield of Dwemer make, but not traditional in any sense of the word. The pieces of it just don't seem to match, and I've wondered if it isn't some sort of fake. I suppose I might be able to part with it, but I'll need some compensation. I'm always looking for new pieces for the Museum of Artifacts. You, oh. You crafty woman. Well, I'm not parting with any of these. Bring me a couple quality pieces and I'll be able to help you, friend. You. Wait here, Thorin. Standard hammer. Oh yeah. Chop 16 to 160 damage. Problem is, it weighs 1,000. <laughs> Unfortunately, I did just want to check then, but I don't think, yeah, I was wondering then if I could potentially steal. Did I leave that lamp on the desk burning? <laughs> I was hoping I could maybe steal the pieces from wherever she put them, but there's no storage area or back area here, so unfortunately I don't think that's going to be an option. Oh well. Oh, in that case... Better go have a look in the lab, see what I can find. Uh, There's got to be something there I can get rid of. I want to keep the stuff I've got on me now. What have I got in the lab that she would be interested in? She did say a couple of donations. I love how long it takes to load in here because of all the crap I've got. Okay. Okay, think, man, think. What could we part with that she'd be interested in? Eidolon's Ward. We don't need that. The Mask of Clavicus file as well. Helm of Orion Bear Claw. Yep, she can have that. Uh, and Elidon's Ward? It's the Randagolf. Over and oh crap! All right. The only thing I mean I can drop right now. I don't need my Morag Tong helm anymore. I can retire that for the moment. Uh, speaking of the bow of shadows. 
You don't just get rid of the bow of bloody shadows, all right? You you don't. You, you don't. Some poxy, you know, uh, skull helmet or, or, or a shield made by some Breton. I can get rid of those, but I'm keeping the bow of bloody shadows. Um, I don't use that anymore. I can go. And let's just equip Mithras' stash and I'll sort out. There we go. Right. We better hope she's interested in these pieces, I suppose. Oh, I still have my silly shield out. We'll get rid of that. Okay, let me just quick save this to make sure we're doing it properly. Lydon's Ward, here we go. What a wonderful shield that is. Are you interested in selling it to the museum or perhaps donating it? I can offer ninth. Whoa, that's the highest she's offered so far. 9,250 gold if you choose to sell it. I wish I shall donate the item. Mm, yeah. This will make a wonderful addition to our collection, I'm sure. <sighs> All right. What about... The, 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 the... We don't even know if these are going to be useful, you know. Couple of oh, you, how of Orion Bearclaw? I must admit, I'm only vaguely familiar with this piece. I shall have to do a bit more research on it. Would you be willing to sell it or perhaps donate it? I can offer you eight thousand. Donate. You are a true friend of the museum. She said, smiling sweetly. You've already been quite a friend to the museum. I'll give you the piece. I'm classifying it as a Dwemer battle shield. As I said, I'm not sure what to make of it. The spike attached to the front of the shield seems to be loose, but a competent smith could probably take care of that for you. Good luck to you, and if you're able to recreate the Blade of Nerevar, I'd love to see the finished product. I it's bet you would. Trickle, right. Trust in gods and justice. Helm of Orion Bearclaw. I'm going to have to reclaim these, aren't I? Just how I'm going to do that, I'm not sure. Probably with Chameleon 100. Try me, and you'll regret it. Oh, hello. There's two of them. That's odd. One of them must be a fake. That's very weird. I don't know why it's done that. Alright. Dwemer Battle Shield, huh? Okay, yeah, that looks pretty obvious to me. Let's go in here to the Craftsman's Hall, see if they can sort it out. Oh, hold on a minute, I've just realised I've left Feyrin standing around in the museum. Come on, man, let's go. Indeed, let us leave. Yeah, Gag. Do I have a battle shield? I'd like a bit of work. Let me see. Oh, as I thought, these two pieces aren't supposed to be attached. Looks like a regular Dwemer shield with this other piece attached. Hope you didn't pay too much for that shield, Fred. Nothing special as far as I can see. The other piece is interesting, though. Dwemer in origin, but unlike anything I've seen before. Broken Dwemer blade piece has been added to your inventory. Okay. Don't need the battle shield, though. There you go. It's a regular Dwemer shield. Get all that repaired. Okay. Where would we find... Ooh. Let's go to the bazaar and talk to the armory lady. Maybe she knows something. much more slowly now look at the magical sparkles I'm all sparkly now 
Lots of bubbles as well, which is kind of weird, but hey. Okay, over this way, I think. I'm like tacking into the wind right now. <laughs> Okay, trader, pawnbroker, Clothea. Armory. Katia Sozia. He seek. Oh dear. Doesn't look like you've got anything useful. That's unfortunate. Hmm. We both shall profit, Sarah, from your speech. Greetings, Dark Elf. I am Drathus Reyes. Perhaps you'd like to hear the latest rumors? Have you heard a terribly powerful and evil wizard, something or other Velas, I think they said, has taken up residence nearby? At the bar the other night, they were talking of the strange lights and sinister laughter late at night. I'd be on my toes if I were you. I bet this wizard will try to make a display of his power soon. Hmm, interesting. Hmm. Uh, well, I suppose we could ask the other shopkeepers, but part of me thinks that isn't going to yield much. Who else do we have around here? Ooh, hang on a minute. Does this guy sell weapons? Looks like he sells weapons. This weather is awful. I don't know how the bazaar is staying open. Cure for sale. Mm, the usual stuff, really. Yeah. We've already been acquainted with the Agak. Do not waste my time about becoming Inderil Hortator. What? First Inderil Hortator was Saint Ner Inderil Naravar. Pretended to this. His honoured name does not deserve having that honour bestowed upon them by, by Great House Indril. Wait, excuse me, what? Our Malexia herself has declared that I am the... I, and, and Vivek. You gits. <laughs> I am Suldreni Salandas, noble of Great House Indril. Salandas clan's been House Indril for longer than most races have been civilized. Not that most have been much of a civilization even now. Ugh, you're one of those. They're quite insufferable, the Indrils. I hope you're not one of them. Why do I feel like the other piece is going to be down in a sewer somewhere? Or maybe in Bamzamshend. But I didn't see it lying around anywhere. So, yeah. Who the devil would we go to see about it? Hello, Sarah. You enjoying the Ash Storm? Jolly good. Um... <laughs> What's that wizard? Is that wizard lady who says she's waiting for someone? Is that the person that, that bloke was on about, perhaps? God, maybe she knows something. I don't know. I'll try any old option now. There's also that dude in the winged gua who wouldn't talk to us. <laughs> He's still there. Still dead.
Oh, I apologise, folks. There's been an awful lot of just sort of running around like a headless chicken in this episode, not really knowing what to do. I hope that hasn't been a bother for anyone. Uh, actually, let's try the tavern. Um... Can I, can I, I should just speak to you for a minute? What exactly do you require of me? No. What about this guy? Nope, he doesn't have anything to say either. Calm Celis. Ratesh. Can you help me, Ratesh? Not really, no. Hmm. All right, then. I'm listening. Where's that? Where, where is that woman that was out here? Take care, stranger. Can't seem to bleed in well find her now. Is she down at the other end here? Oh, this ash storm is so annoying. There she is. Finally. You're not wearing shoes. I've just noticed that. That's a bit weird. Alright, it's not her. Okay. Well, you know what, folks? I think we're coming up on time for this episode. In fact, I've gone a bit over in real life because I had to cut the recording and go running around looking for non-existent satchels for a while. So, folks, I hope you've enjoyed. Um... But that's going to be it for this episode. I will join you again. Um, let's just look at how Wraith got clips through the collar, uh, the, the cuff there on, on the robes. It's kind of a bit odd looking. Um, anyway, yes, I'll catch you next time where we will hopefully find the final piece of the blade, wherever the bloody hell it is. And uh, yeah. And I hope you enjoyed, folks. Give us a like, give us a sub. And I'll catch you in the next one very soon. Toodaloo.